figured I would make a recording. I'm sitting in the dark and I'm very worried about the future of Masters of the Universe, He-Man and She-Ra. I'm I am I, I'm not gonna say that I'm just now worried about it, but I I am I am very worried about it right now. Uh, just recently there's been a couple of things that happened. There was an announcement that uh, that there was gonna be a Netflix animated She-Ra show. Probably not gonna have He-Man in it. And then they said, oh, this David Goyer guy is working on a Masters of the Universe movie that's probably going to have He-Man in it and no She-Ra or something. Who knows? Doesn't matter. They'll probably make He-Man black, like, you know, or Asian or something, because Hollywood is selling all its assets to China, and the corporate prison companies are paying for everything, and all their thug life and climate change and all their their DARPA recruitment and their just just garbage garbage in garbage out and i don't know i don't know how people are supposed to change that i i i think i think almost the best option for masters of the universe is going to be that people decide that they're going to work together that the fans decide they're going to work on on a movie like together and try and scrounge up some money and try and get it out to each other somehow. I don't know how. But I know that uh, waiting for Hollywood, I mean, I spent years waiting for Hollywood to make the worst Masters of the Universe movie that there ever was. And I can tell you exactly how bad it's going to be. Uh, I've said these things before. This, this movie that this David Goyer is working on. And I don't blame him, just like I don't blame Michael Bay, because Hasbro allowed Michael Bay to make five Transformers movies, and Hasbro has been screwing with Transformers for years. They gave us the Cybertron series and Armada and Beast Masters and or Beast Wars and, and like GoBots or whatever. I've watched a lot of this David Goyer stuff recently. I can't say he's been involved or credited to be involved in any movies I particularly liked. Uh, the best thing that I saw was a couple years ago, he did get credited for a show called Da Vinci's Demons, which uh, was basically, I describe it as, uh, it's MacGyver mixed with Game of Thrones. It's like, Da Vinci figures some stuff out and every once in a while there's a bunch of nudity and blood and people killing each other and you know the F word every 10 minutes the big problem with names is that you don't really know who these people really are anymore you don't get the signature of an organic director anymore like there used to be you know I mean I certainly grew up with movies from the greatest era of, of ex explosion in creativity which was the the late 70s and early 80s all the best movies seem to come out of that era I mean there's stuff going back before that the experimental phases of Hollywood in the black and white era and you know, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly in the 60s. A couple of good movies in the 60s. Pink Panther, you know. But you see, back in the past, you used to be able to watch a movie and they would tell you who directed it or basically produced it hands-on. And you could see the signature of their work. These days you can't because these days they basically co-opted they've basically taken over the names of directors by just like buying them just giving them like a suitcase full of money and uh saying hey would you like to be like 
the name that we put on this movie that's like not necessarily their movie, you know? And there could be six or seven different writers working on it. And then there's elitism where there's these big hundred million dollar actors and people in Hollywood that just like uh, they want they want they want to use digital effects to make their face pop out of the the image on the screen. They want to have script approval, which is a joke these days. Always has been. You can't give an actor script approval. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would the actor have script approval? It doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. You know, Masters of the Universe, isn't that difficult to figure out? I figured it out. I storyboarded it a long time ago. I've been trying to get people to pay attention to my movie storyboards for a long time. I've been 3D imaging it. I've got videos all about how to make a Masters of the Universe movie, like two movies, He-Man and She-Ra, followed by Peace and Havoc. And that's it. I mean, you can expand on it. You can add a bunch of extra characters in there. It doesn't matter. But, I mean... See, there's so many there's so many problems that, you know, I don't know if everybody understands what's wrong in Hollywood these days. Like, Hollywood is basically, it's a business now. Like, they formatted it in a certain way. And it's, I mean, I guess you could compare it to some of the popular things like podcasts where if you can get sponsors, and believe me, I don't have any sponsors. But if you had sponsors and they were to tell you the nature of your show or they were to, you know, sponsor you because of the nature of your show, then it certainly would seem like, or at least a comparison to the kind of corruption and collusion that's going on in Hollywood, okay? Corporate prison companies and their subsidiaries have been paying for rap music and hip hop and gangster stuff for a long time. And a lot of that's gotten into the movies. So you see, I'll give you I'll give you a really good example. Okay, there was a movie called Never Back Down, yo, and it was a complete piece of turd. Nobody watched it. It bombed right away, and they made three more of them because if you do what the corporate prison companies want you to do, which is to put out a bunch of like gangster stuff where there's like the white hood and the black hood and everybody's in a hood and it's like the rich kids and the poor kids and they're all fighting each other. See, that movie was crap. I would bring up that it was directed by the fabulous director Jeff Wadlow, who for a while was attached to a Masters of the Universe movie. I don't know if that scared anybody a couple years ago, but it scared the living piss out of me. I was like, are you kidding me? They're going to get that, that dildo and fart joke and Jeff Wadlow to make a Masters of the Universe movie, clearly he's been given the go-ahead because if you do what they want you to do, if you make the crap that they want, if you make their climate change movies, then, and then you go on TV and you got Matt Damon and he's just like, well, if due to climate change, we need to like depopulate the planet because there's too many people around. <laughs> and it's like, that guy gets $100 million on a condo on the beach in Florida and he can just, you know, make as many movies as they want. And they've gotten to a lot of actors. Like, they're gangster crap. And, it, you know, I would try and be clear about the gangster stuff. Okay. Again, there's, 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 uh, there's thug life. There's climate change. There's uh, straight-up CIA propaganda. Then there's uh, DARPA promotional material. And then there's this, like, neoliberal feminism, which kind of ties into racism and, and bring in millions of refugees from who knows where. Just bring in the worst mongoloids from China and North Africa and, you know, countries where they eat dogs and they don't have toilet paper. You know, that's fine. And people don't necessarily see it. It's like, you know, the last Star Wars movie before they finally killed off all the original cast, which is what I've been saying for years. It's like, yeah, if they bring, if they bring in Han and Leia and Luke, they're going to, they're going to kill them. Like they're just going to kill them off and bring in a bunch of gay vampires. And that's basically what they did. There's some theories out there that they actually whacked Carrie Fisher just so that they could make sure that she was done. 
and boister up women by making her like a really important character or something. And it fails. I mean, it doesn't work. I hope people aren't paying money for this crap. And definitely don't spend your money on a Masters of the Universe movie coming out of Sony Paramount. These are the people these are the people who gave us the all-female Ghostbusters. These are the people who gave us the, the 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 North Korean hack or something. And that movie, The Interview or something. It's like, it's so much garbage in, garbage out. Getting back to Thug Life, okay, gangster stuff. A lot of movies have this because you can get money from the corporate prison companies to sponsor your movie, to get your movie made. And... It's not always just like, you know, straight out of Compton, like just black hoods, you know, like who is who is that that metal man in the recent uh, Justice League movie where he just like throws his hoodie on and he's like, oh, I'm all black and nobody likes me because I'm black. And it's like, no, they don't just do that. OK, they make these movies that are like angry white guy with a gun. And they've gotten to everybody, man. Liam Neeson's doing it. They got they got Robert Duvall. I mean, the guy the guy who was in Network in the seventies, that movie where he went up to the window and he's like, "I want you to open up your window and I want you to yell. I want you to say I'm sick and tired of it and I'm not gonna take it anymore." You know, they got to that guy. I, and directors too, like I was saying. I mean, there's this thing where it's like they, they say, oh, David Goyer's going to direct it. David Goyer's not going to have anything to do with it. I mean, it's like it's like people who think that, uh, like, J.J. Abrams directed Star Wars and Star Trek. J.J. Abrams didn't direct anything, okay? They've got other people making these movies, and then they pay for a director's name that they can attach to it and say, well, that guy did it, so that you blame that guy. So you used to be able to see a signature from a great director. You know, if you saw a Woody Allen movie, you knew you were watching a Woody Allen movie. You saw a Ridley Scott movie, you knew you were watching Ridley Scott. Nowadays, you don't know. Who knows? You can kind of tell who's paying for it. I mean, they make this movie uh, just recently, uh, Geostorm, where there's like satellite, weird, like high-end computer graphics, which, I mean, they can just use any amount of money to put these agendas out there where there's just like these space satellites that can control the weather and and within like 10 seconds they establish well of course there's climate change like that's just we don't question that it's such a joke uh, i'm so i'm so tired of i'm so tired of not getting any entertainment out of hollywood and I would probably, I, I would probably have to say that, you know, part of the problem is that Hollywood's out of original ideas. And they won't admit it. They're trying to sell their assets to China. They won't, they won't admit that they're out of ideas. I mean, I've got a couple ideas left. I storyboarded six movies. I storyboarded Transformers properly two movies then robotech two movies and then masters of the universe two movies and if and if those movies could get made then hollywood can close their curtains and just call it quits forever that'd be great i don't care but they won't do that they want to make a bunch of crap and it's gonna like burn down rome you know what i'm saying so they make all this gangster stuff and then they make like, they make straight up CIA propaganda. A good example of that is uh, Zero Dark Thirty that had Jessica Chastain in it. She's like so not interesting. And then like they keep giving her roles. She'll probably be the sorceress in this movie, you know. Probably. The, let me let me go through. I've, I've explained this before. What I think. Is going to happen in this Masters of the Universe movie that David Goyer is attached to. Okay, it's going to have like you know, it, it's going to have climate change because like Skeletor is going to have like a freeze ray, 
and it's going to permanently or irrevocably change the climate of Eternia, and He-Man's going to have to help Randor push through a carbon tax in order to save the planet, and they'll just get, like, you know, Matt Damon to play He-Man, even though he doesn't look like him. Or if there's enough money behind it, they might get somebody like, uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, and uh, even though he doesn't look anything like He-Man, they'll just, you know, they'll use computer graphics. And like I said, they might they might just get like a black He-Man or like, you know, make him Chinese or something. It's like, why not? And to try and cover race as an issue, because it is an issue, a lot of people ignore. And they will say, well, it's not an issue. It is an issue. But see, you could make a He-Man movie where everybody in the show is white. And there's nothing wrong with that. And then you could make virtually the exact same movie and have everybody in the movie be whatever color of you get a purple people doesn't matter have have the same story but gear it towards whoever your audience is you know what i'm saying it's like if you make a movie that had all white people in it and white people made it there's going to be somebody out there saying whoa this is like racism because they, they just want to make a movie with white people in it. It's like, well, that's your audience. And then it's continuity. But instead, what Hollywood keeps doing is they make these movies where there's just like these superfluous characters that are minorities. And they boister, their, boister them up as minorities. And it just ruins the movie. It's stupid. It doesn't impress anybody. It really doesn't. But, you know, I knew eventually Hollywood, I, I knew they were going to eventually wreck Masters of the Universe. I mean, I think they actually enjoy the idea. And I also know that it's taken them a long time to figure out how to wreck the movie. Because, like, He-Man and She-Ra, like, bullets bounce off of these two. Okay? Like, how do you corrupt Masters of the Universe when the very title is about duality and it's about you know the symbolism of strength and power is the symbolism of human strength and human power how do you wreck that you gotta really try you know it'll have it'll have darpa promotional material in it see there's like these military development labs like darpa or whatever and uh they really really want to get people into pharmaculture and like get like implant brain chips in the back of your neck or in your hand or something and i've always made this joke that if they make this movie he man's not going to be able to use the power sword unless he gets like man at arms will come along and inject a, a a chip a microchip into his wrist so that it'll have biosecurity software in it that if he picks up the power sword, it won't be like he says, oh, I have the power or anything. He, the, the sword won't work unless he has like the biochip embedded in his hand, you know. And they'll get Dwayne the Rock to play Man at Arms. Not because Dwayne the Rock is good at playing anything or because he looks like Man at Arms, but because they have these like market statistics that they think a whole bunch of people really like Dwayne the Rock. And so it's like, well, who cares if he's right for it or if he can act or if he demands script approval so they let him change a few things or they give him an extra scene where he gets to act like an idiot because he's like, well, that's what my audience likes. And it's like, no, don't you understand anything? Like, and, and you do this thing and it's like, I hate to do this. I hate to, I hate to sit here and make like a rant video. I mean, I don't think too many people are going to watch this. In fact, you know, you push enough buttons and you'll just get muted and blocked from YouTube. Easy. Easy. I mean, censorship, I've said this a million times, censorship is the biggest problem we have on planet Earth. It's worse than nuclear bombs. It's worse than anything that we've ever had to deal with, ever, in the history of time. Censorship is the worst problem that we have. And they've given the tools of censorship to everybody. Like, most people are just on the internet. They just click the, the click the block button, and then they live in a bubble where they don't want to talk to anybody else. They want to th they don't want to think about anything. They don't want to think about. They just block out the rest of the world. 
instead of working together. That is the power and strength of human beings, which is the symbolism of masters of the universe. It's the temple of man. It's He-Man and She-Ra. And, and it should be He-Man and She-Ra because they're, you know, they're, it's duality. I mean, duality is sort of like a per, the, in, the inner demons, like a person has good and bad in them. That's sort of what duality is supposed to mean. But when you have a brother and sister, it's like a different kind of duality which is why Masters of the Universe would be such an awesome movie to do if they could do it properly, and Filmation didn't do it properly. There's so much continuity problems in Filmation. It's baffling. I mean, and a lot of people really love it. They're like, well, you know, I hear this thing. People are like, well, if they screw it up in Hollywood, well, I've always got the originals, and they're good. I don't know what to say. I mean, this movie's going to be really bad. Like, it's going to be really bad. You look at a few movies that have come out recently, and you can see all of their crap. I mean, they're, they're currently really pushing the whole refugees are good, Muslims are good. They're really pushing that, you know? Like, the, the, the recent Star Wars movie was all about helping refugees out. You know, they show up with, like... No, no, it's not even the characters showing up. It's it's Hollywood showing up. Hollywood shows up and saves the refugees. Meh. You know, it was in the Logan movie, that recent Logan movie. They took they took this character that was, you know, pretty good, pretty popular in X Men. They go and they take Logan and they have him help a bunch of children who were down in like Mexico get across the border. And gee, I hope Trump didn't build that wall because that'd be horrible. And it's like people don't even understand anything. Like people are so dumb. The idiocracy wins, man. You know, people don't even understand that Donald Trump never even said that he wanted to build a real wall. He he early in his early in his like election campaign, he did this speech where he was comparing the the national security of Israel to America and that Israel has the greatest borders and protective security measures on planet Earth, and it's all paid for by the US. And then he said, why can't we have that? Why can't we build a wall? And he wasn't talking about a real wall. He was just saying, why can't we build a wall? Why can't, you know, like you're gonna build a wall around the entire country. He's talking about all the measures that you take to protect your nationality or something. And I don't even think he can properly define it because it's pretty hard to do without sounding really, really racist. When it's like, you know, there's, you want to talk about racism, listen, okay, in 50 to 100 years, there's not going to be any white people left. There's not going to be any black people left. There's not going to be any distinguishable race. There's going to be one brownish mongoloidian thing and nobody's going to be able to talk to each other because language is going to be gone. Nobody's going to remember how to do anything because the systems that are in place are based on specialist services and, and big companies that put everybody in their place. And when that starts to fall apart, nobody's going to remember how to do anything. Like, it's just, it's scary, the future. And, you know, I try and put things into perspective and it's like, the reason why I have hope for the future is because I grew up on like Masters of the Universe, you know, and Transformers. The proper story of Transformers is a message in a bottle from Cybertron, where Cybertron allowed industry to take control and it eventually somehow led to there being nobody left alive on Cybertron. There's no life. The machines are the only thing left and they're running out of battery juice so they leave the planet and they come to our planet to come get some more energy to plug in their their robot systems and get power and they have a little you know they have a little weird military protocol where optimus prime the optimal and primary side of teletron and megatron the omega of cybertron the last act of cybertron they battle each other and when they do that the people of earth are supposed to see that 
this is this is wrong. The people of Earth are supposed to look at this and say, look, we don't want our planet to turn out like Cybertron. You think you're going to get that from Michael Bay and Hasbro? Never. They've given up on a proper story because once you tell that story, you're certainly not going to make any sequels because it's going to have an end. It's going to have a beginning and an end. It's going to have a beginning where, like, you know, you haven't seen the Transformers yet. They show up, they do their thing, and then they all die. It's because it's got to be Shakespearean by the end. Optimus Prime would tell all the Autobots to self-destruct if the people of Earth said, we don't need you here. That would be the end. You think they're going to do that with Masters of the Universe? You think they're going to take He-Man and She-Ra and decide, okay, how does this begin? And then there's an adventure, and they learn some stuff, they accomplish something, they have local area problems like Skeletor, they have galactic invaders like Hordak, and then they're just going to like say, okay, well, that's great, we figured it out, uh, we solved all the problems, and turn back into Adam and Adora, and everybody laughs, and it's good, and that's the end? You think they're going to do that? No. They're going to make some stupid movie that's like, maybe this will be successful, and then even if it isn't successful, we'll figure out how to get some money, probably get the, you know, the corporate prison companies will back them and, and the CIA will back them. So, you know, they'll get enough money. I mean, it doesn't matter where the money comes from. They've got so much money they print it like they don't care. But, the, you know, eventually they'll make another one and another one until it runs out of steam and they don't know how to do it anymore. And frankly, that's what Filmation did back in the day. Don't expect anything good out of Hollywood. Don't expect anybody who's like me, and I, I'm not trying to brag, I know there's a lot of people like me. I've spent years of my life trying to figure out what Masters of the Universe is about. Trying to figure out what that story is. Do you think anybody supports me? Do you think anybody gets behind me? Do you think anybody helps me out? No. Nobody. I'm all on my own, just sitting here in the dark. I don't know. I think the whole world's falling apart. But, you know, I'm in a particularly bad mood and I hate to be negative all the time. I That's why I made movie storyboards because I believe in a positive solution. I, I hate to finger point and say, well, this is somebody's fault. And it's like, you know, what am I doing about it? I don't know. I... I <laughs> I don't know who's going to pay attention to me. I hope that David Goyer guy pays attention to me. I know he won't. I mean, if you're in Hollywood, you're not even allowed to be on social media. But I hope that guy would pay attention to me. And I hope he would pay attention to history and look at what happened to Michael Bay. And again, I don't particularly blame Michael Bay because Hasbro has been screwing with Transformers since they allowed the original Japanese company to go bankrupt. But you look at what happened to Michael Bay. He had to he had to move out of his offices. He had to get like NASA uh, MIT level security to his computers because people were trying to hack him. He had people trying to find out where he was because they wanted to murder him. I hope David Goyer has some security because people are going to come after him when they ruin this movie. And I don't know who's actually going to write it and direct it. You know, they'll just bring in their usual people who put out all the gangster stuff and all the, you know, all the CIA garbage. You know, they'll get those people to make the movie, but they'll put his name on it and everybody out there will want to kill David Goyer. Like, I mean, I'm not a particularly violent person, but I'm going to spend years of my life worrying about Masters of the Universe. Has David Goyer spent years of his life worrying about Masters of the Universe? doesn't matter. I don't think he's actually directing the movie. I mean, it's like they hand you a suitcase full of money and they're like, yes, we'd like to use your name because uh, we've had some success in the past when you did that Batman movie and people seemed to like it and uh, had a sort of a dark tone to it. And we think that's the direction we want to go. Hope people are ready for the absolute, just torrentially bad movie that that's going to happen.
hope people are ready. And I've been saying it for years. It's going to be absolutely terrible. There's no version of this where it's going to be good. Like, there isn't. And you know how you can really know, even if you're not like paying attention to how bad a lot of movies are, you know, listen, if they won't talk about the movie before it comes out and they just wait, they just wait to the last minute to show you any images until they have a trailer and they've actually finished making the movie, then it's because they don't want to admit how bad it is. They don't want you to know. And there's a whole industry and industry set up around making fun of movies after they're finished making them. Like you've got Cinema Sins and you've got you've got uh, Honest Trailers or whatever good examples of people who like, and then that's somewhat organic, but there's all these people who are ready to rip up on movies after the movie comes out. They're like, oh, that Star Wars movie was really bad. It's like, yeah, what did you think it was going to be? Do you think it was going to be good? Do you think George Lucas had anything to do with it? Do you think George Lucas cares? No. I don't even think J.J. Abrams directed that thing. I think a bunch of goons were puppeteering that situation and they put his name on it. That's what they do. I don't know. Again, if there was going to be a good Masters of the Universe movie that was ever going to happen, or Transformers, there, there's going to have to be an organic process. And that's not going to come from some big billion dollar Hollywood industry where they're trying to sell their assets to foreign parties. You know, before they run out of ideas completely, they're trying to sell off their assets. And they won't even make one decent movie. Like, can you even think of a good movie that you saw in like a year, five years, ten years? When was the last time you saw a movie that was any good? I have trouble remembering any movie that I've seen recently that was good. I mean, I can think of a few movies that were watchable that, you know, you could sort of enjoy. I was going to talk about this one particular little picture that just came out of like these Twitter trolls that is like David Goyer and it's such a set up picture like I don't know if anybody gets this but like there's this one picture uh, and that's all you're gonna get for months believe me they're already making this movie and they're not gonna tell you anything about it until they're done but there's this picture of David Goyer and he's like pointing at the computer screen and it's totally set up this picture and there's some other guy who's like writing on the table he's in the middle of writing something it's so fake and you know there's an image on the screen that looks terrible i mean everybody's like it looks like it's it's a battle uh mecha suit tila but it looks kind of dumb and it's like yeah it's freaking jar jar binks what do you think it is it's stupid. It's pointless. Like I said, if it's not an organic movie process, it's not going to be good. It's a bunch of people trying to, you know, get get as much money out of the process of entertaining people, and most of that money comes out of the hype phase. If they can't get you to go see a movie within one month, then the popular notion of going to see that movie it vanishes. I mean. All you have to do is just resist going to see a movie. Just wait. Wait a week and don't go see it when it's in the theater. And then wait another week. And then another week after that. And then eventually, you're going to be like a couple months later, you're going to say to yourself, gee, I can't even remember what it was I was going to go see. It was some movie in the theater. It was like, it, you know, everybody was talking about it. And I was like, I was going to go see it, but it was like, you know, it was probably stupid. And then you didn't go see it, so then you just kind of forgot. And it's like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Who cares? I don't know. Is anybody listening to me? 
Probably not. Wasn't it Winston Churchill said, like, you get the most flack when you're right over the target? Do you, do you know how much, like, childishness and attacks and censorship I get? Trying to engage with people? Trying to tell people to pay attention? I get told to shut up, bug off, and go jump in the river. It's like, really? Are there any Masters of the Universe fans out there? Like, actual fans? Because I know there's a lot of people who claim that they do. Well, if you care about Masters of the Universe, then there's going to need to be some effort to work together to make a good movie because Hollywood is never going to do it properly. Never. You know, like, they made... I said this. I mean, they, they made that really garbage Thug Life movie uh, never back down. And they made, like, four of them. And nobody watched it because it was crap. So then they put cars in it and they call it Fast and Furious. And Fast and Furious is probably the only thing that I can think of that resembles Michael Bay's Transformers. Do you think there's a coincidence? Who knows? But, I mean, if you can track these things back to the basics of like climate change, thug life, CIA propaganda, DARPA promotional material, and neoliberal feminism and racism. And it's just like, it's the same crap over and over and over. I mean, occasionally something comes out that's decent enough that you can watch it, but most of it's just trash. And people just need to boycott everything that comes out of Hollywood. Like, listen, you know, I hear people saying, you know, just don't go see this Masters of the Universe movie. No, don't see anything that comes from Sony Paramount. In fact, don't spend your money on anything coming out of the major media groups because if they can't make one movie that's decent, then you can't trust them ever again. They're done. They need to fall apart. They need to sell their assets. They need to sell all their crap away. They need to close down all their major studios and then maybe some new kind of, you know, collective of artists will get together and start making good movies. Maybe. Anyways, uh, I have no decent plan for this video. I'm just, I'm hoping that, I'm hoping there's hope. I don't, I don't see any hope. I think. I think it's all gone. I think everything that people cared about in the past is gone. And there's going to have to be some big changes. Like politically, there's going to have to be some big changes. I mean, we have Corey Feldman for prime minister up here in Canada. I don't see much hope. And like I said, I have hope in my world because I grew up with great shows. You know, when I was a kid, all the best stuff happened. And it was so inspirational. It was so meaningful. It was like, I'm going to be powerful one day. I don't know how, but everything's going to be awesome. Then you look at, like, young people today. What do they have that's interesting? What do they have that's good? They don't seem to have anything good. I mean, young, young people now, like... They should just be burning everything down. Like, like I would encourage that kind of thing to happen. It's wrong. But it's like the, everything should just get destroyed and we should rebuild or something. Like, what are the answers when the system is so screwed up that nobody knows how to fix it? I don't know. And I hate being negative. I really hate, I really hate being negative. A lot of people make videos where they just, they rant about stuff. And like I said, there, a lot of people are just gonna sit back, wait for Hollywood to make the worst Masters of the Universe movie ever. And then they're gonna go and make videos and stuff and they're gonna say, well, this happened and that happened and why did this happen and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, why weren't you interested before Hollywood trashed this thing? I mean, I've spent years trying to get people to pay attention to my storyboards. And it's like, 
maybe if there's something already ready to go and I'm ready to direct it, like I'm ready to direct it now. I, I was ready to direct Masters of the Universe way before they were talking to Goyer. You know, and like I said, I don't particularly think Goyer is going to direct this thing. I think there's a bunch of shadow puppet men that, you know, puppet masters that are actually going to make a Masters of the Universe movie, or at least they're going to call it that. And it, it'll make them money, and it'll serve whatever little purpose they think it's going to serve for their ends, you know. I mean, they're going to be rich, they're going to have lots and lots of money, and People are still going to worship Hollywood until suddenly there's no more movies because uh, suddenly all the movies are in Chinese or something. And it's like, what? It's like, oh, didn't you know? We're not making those movies that are about, like, America anymore because America has turned into a prostitute for any nation that has the money to buy our stuff. And nobody's willing to protect it. Nobody's willing to build on it. And we're running out of ideas. So we're just going to like sit back and wait for the world to die or something. Like, psh, you got me. I can barely hold a sentence together. Like, I can barely keep my wits about me. But it's going to be bad, you know. They'll make their Masters of the Universe movie. They'll make two, three, four, five, doesn't matter. They'll all be bad. They'll be really, really bad. Like, they'll stink. They'll stink worse than Stinkor. They'll stink, man. They'll be bad. Be real bad. Where's the hope for the future? I don't know. I have no idea. So many people are being poisoned by the food and the water and the air and the drugs. It's like, on an individual level, you think most people would be smarter? And I don't, I don't think I'm necessarily the smartest person in the world. I, I'm baffled that I would have the answers that I think I have and then I'm even more blown away that nobody listens to me. And it's like, oh, guess what? It's too late. I don't know. They're going to make their Masters of the Universe movie, and it's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad. Don't spend your money on it. Like, and uh, people don't want to talk about piracy. Listen, He-Man has the Red Iron Cross, which is the Cross of Lorraine, the Iron Cross of the Templar Knights, the Temple of Man that goes back to Egypt or whatever, and esoteric knowledge like you might find from the Freemasons now, which is pathetic. The Freemasons is like an open public museum now. It's like, it doesn't even matter. You know, they're like, oh yeah, and Joseph Smith was one of us, and the, and the presidents and the founding fathers of America were all Freemasons, and Freemasons as in freedom, proper, you know, rights and freedoms was the goal, and strengthening people, strength and power, like the prince of strength and the princess of power, symbolism is all there. I was making a point. <laughs> I was trying to make a point. They're not going to allow the Iron Cross to be in a Masters of the Universe movie. They're not going to allow it. They're not going to allow symbolism. It's just going to be all gangster crap. It's just going to be garbage in, garbage out.
the uh, you know there's there's like a point to all this <laughs> the it's like the worst kind of video that I can make where I'm just gonna like rant and be angry because everything is terrible I don't know just don't spend your money on this movie don't go oh yeah I was talking about pirates uh, I just remembered yeah the Templar Knights were betrayed by the French King some of them went to Spain some of them went to Scotland and a lot of them became pirates and I was going to make the reference, I could reference Gilbert and Sullivan, with the greatest theatrical play, the greatest operetta ever written, The Pirates of Penzance. I could quote you a lot of that play. I could sing a lot of it. It's a great play. It's great. Pirates, man. So what I'm saying is, like, if you don't want to pay for movies, then you should download them. And what you'll find is that these days, the big companies in Hollywood, like the Disney mob, they're buying up their own streaming sites. They're buying up their own download sites so they can try to maybe somehow potentially control what people can download. And eventually, they're going to go after anybody who's a real pirate. And they're going to try and stop anyone from being able to upload and download anything for free. And then you're really going to find out what those movies are worth. Because when people have to pay for that crap, and they know that the people responsible for making that crap have also made it impossible for you to download those movies, even if you had some like honesty in your system where you're like, okay, I'm going to download a movie for free, check it out, and if it's any good, then maybe I'll pay money to actually watch that movie, and I'll buy a DVD because it'll have the director's commentary in it and extra features, and I love that stuff because I love movies. Well, when you take that ability away from people and... 99% of movies are complete crap. Nobody's going to nobody is going to pay for any movies ever again when they have to. And that's freedom. I don't know. What does anybody want me to say? I got my pink shirt on, you know. Uh, Prince Adam in the uh, filmation show had a pink shirt. The toy shirt was red, but in the cartoon it was pink. There's that iron cross. It's got little dots around it. I think that's tracking the planet Venus and those intersecting circles that make the cross. That's like the planet Earth and the planet Venus or something, maybe. I don't know symbolism. That's my He-Man Shira chessboard. Rather proud of that. And if you want to know how to make a chessboard out of Masters of the Universe, where left to right is boys and girls, duality, if you want to know how to do that, you spend years trying to understand character structure and the meaning and message and value of storytelling. Do you think David Goyer did that? I don't think so. Do you think the goons that are running Hollywood from the corporate prison subsidiaries and the, and the CIA agents that are trying to put out their crap, do you, do you think that they spent years trying to understand it? Nope. I rendered that Johnny Five. Took a few days. Plundor. What can you do? I don't know. I really don't know. I know that my movies that I storyboarded, and I don't know if people think that I'm like arrogant. I want people to give me feedback on my work. I want people to work together because you sit back and wait for Hollywood, you're just, you're going to get worse and worse crap. You know, I mentioned like uh, DARPA promotional material. 
something that Alex Jones called DARPA porn a while back. There's these movies where everybody's a computer hacker and, you know, you need to get a, a good example. There was a movie not too long ago called Jupiter Ascending. Tell me you didn't pay money to watch this crap. There's this movie Jupiter Ascending where this stupid boy, he like, he goes to this like space station around Jupiter or something. There's Tom Cook. He's awesome. You should support him. He drew that for me. That's She-Ra with the blue pearl. Yeah, there was this movie Jupiter Ascending and it was really, really terrible. And in order to open up any doors on the spaceship, you had to get a you had to get a chip inserted into your wrist so that you could wave it in front of the door and the doors would open up and it was like all biometric chip, whatever. Just put a chip in the back of your brain. Do you want that crap in a Masters of the Universe movie? I don't. And it's like, well, the movie hasn't happened yet, so it's like, how do you know it's going to be that bad? If it's, if it's not going to be that bad, then I double-dog dare anybody working on that movie. And I would say David Goyer, but I don't think Goyer is actually doing anything for that movie. They just paid for his name, you know? I mean, I like I said, I've tried to watch a bunch of movies that he's credited for as a creator or a director or a writer, and you don't see a signature in the work. It's like, who's making this crap? You know, and, and again, I challenge these people. Talk to me. Tell me why you're not making the storyboards that I drew and wrote years ago that are the answer to Masters of the Universe. He-Man and She-Ra, Peace and Havoc. That's what I called it anyways. And if you were to make more than two movies, I mean, there's a variable there. But I mean, talk to me about it. You know? It's like... Why are you making some totally disgusting version of Masters of the Universe that's going to bomb? I mean, when I say bomb, I mean, to me, it's going to bomb. To the people who care about Masters of the Universe, it's going to bomb. Even if they make money off of it or they don't make money off of it, it's like, I don't care. Why would I care that a bunch of people in L.A. or somewhere are going to make money? Why would I care about that? And it's this weird thing that a lot of people celebrate. They're like, oh, do you know how much money that movie made? Really? I don't care. Or they say, or you know what? You spend enough time trying to figure out who the fans are. The ones who are really active are these like 30, 40 year old boys who are collecting toys. Okay. They're what Michael Savage called teenage geriatrics. And I don't want to say it's like a mental illness to like sit around buying little plastic toys made in China, but all that money that's been flowing through from plastic manufacturers in China making the little toys, this is the reason why China is slowly trying to take over the U.S. And they're distracting everyone. China is invading the country but everybody's talking about these North African refugee, Muslim crazy jihadis pouring in. And it's like, have you noticed the amount of Chinese activity? I don't know. I, and I'm not trying to do that. I mean, that thing of like reality and focusing on the future. It's going to require a profile. It's going to require understanding the differences between people and where people can do their best effort for the sake of their people. If you're different from somebody else, I mean, listen, I can't stand people who are like, there's, there shouldn't be any racism and it's like, we're all the same. And it's like, guess what? We're not all the same. Boys and girls are different. There's different races. There's completely different people in this world. And respectfully, I don't know what's going to happen in the future if nobody can understand and do something about the differences between people. And I don't want to dwell on it too much, but it's like, you know, the direct results of a bunch of overnight billionaires in China making boondoggles with the U.S. is that now the precious Hollywood that I grew up with 
where there were all these amazing movies. You know, there was Tron and Condor Man. Do you remember Condor Man? It was a Disney Sunday night special that had Michael Crawford in it. Michael Crawford played the Phantom of the Opera for Andrew Lloyd Webber for seven years, and he was Condor Man with music from Henry Mancini, who did the, the soundtrack for the Pink Panther, where it was like, Condor Man, Condor Man. <laughs> You'll never get that again. Never. Never. You will never get another Condor Man. You know? Or, you know, what's a good movie? Like, there's so many good movies. I, I want to talk about movies. Like, I don't want to sit here and rant about how bad a Masters of the Universe movie is going to be. I want to talk about how, how good it could be, you know. There was a movie uh, in 1983 that was called Conquest, okay? And it was a highly stylized visual art piece. Another one is Crawl. Can't remember the date on that. But uh, Crawl was very, very artistically driven, like in terms of set design and... Uh, the the look of the movie it's an adventure movie but it's designed to sort of take you out of the world of of uh how could i say you, your perception of reality is gone uh one of the early movies that did that was barbarella uh yeah barbarella crawl and the movie conquest in 1983 <clears throat> I think there's been more than one movie called Conquest. I have like a film historical knowledge. Actually, there was there there was there was a movie about Christopher Columbus called 1492 uh, Conquest of Paradise or something like that. I don't know. I mean, who cares? Doesn't matter. And you can be a historical curator, and you can try and figure out how they built the pyramids. You can go all the way back to the megalithic era and try and rewrite things in your own mind, or you can you can get angry because the you know the academic halls of Europe and the Smithsonian are covering everything up, and we want to know what's down in the sub vaults of the Vatican, and it's like, good luck, you're gonna have to crash the system down to dust before you're gonna find any of those really well kept books where all the secrets are that nobody's been allowed to read, if they exist, you know. And every once in a while throughout history, what you'll find is the people in charge are using censorship. And I mentioned it before. Censorship is the worst problem we have on the face of the planet. And it's it's not just the upper up class that are using censorship as a tool, but they're the ones who every, you know, couple hundred years, they just like burn all the books in the library. You know, like a hundred years ago in China, the, whoever the emperor guy was, he was like, destroy all the books, like all of the books. You think that's a joke? They were just like, no, we're going to search everybody's homes and we're going to destroy all the books in China. You know, these days, everything's on the Internet. So, you know, a good example is like Wikipedia, where... Half of it is made up because anybody can enter information in there. And then you want to say, well, what's the standard? It's like, well, what about Google? Because you can just type anything into Google. Google has practically become an AI, you know. And what that really means is that the system has been designed to itemize everything, including speech, uh, the, 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 the logic method to what you're trying to attain, it's all being itemized, which is really a corporatocratic system. It's about product. It's about what are you going to buy? What do you need? It's not about the real needs of people, which is love and comfort, happiness and pleasure. That's what it is. And it's like, if people understood, like, the temple of man, which is where He-Man comes from, uh, if people understood the value of the human race, power and strength, and what it really means working together, building a better future, 
that people don't even understand it as like a concept. It's always a struggle. It's like you got to get somewhere in the future. It's like, <sighs> haven't we figured out how to work together? Haven't we figured out how to build a better future? I mean, I practically make the conclusions that we just need to destroy everything, which I don't particularly, you know, really mean that. I, I just mean like, I mean it in, in reference, I'll make a movie reference. <laughs> there's a, there's a movie that, uh, Roger Corman will, would not admit to having directed. There's a movie called Teenage Caveman, which I'm not even recommending that you watch it, but there's a scene in that where, I mean, there's all these like cavemen, cave women, <laughs> but the joke of the movie was that they were actually in the future and that civilization had like blown itself up and everything had fallen apart. And then there were like cavemen again and they had no idea, but there were these like wise men that were in the tribe and they did this ritual where they would build things out of like sand and dirt and stuff on the ground. They would just get down to the ground and they would like pick up the dirt and rocks and they would pile it up and they would build something out of it. And then they would wreck it. They would trash it apart. They would break it and turn it back into the ground again. And it was like a really simple thing in the movie. It was a really cheap movie. But there was like this sort of unspoken message in that that people do this weird ritual where they build up a society. They go to the greatest heights that they can get to and then they just wreck everything or something. And it's like, no. Hollywood, they're done. I mean, really, they're done. There's no, there's no hope left for Hollywood. And I hope people get that. It's like, just stop spending your money on any movies and shows that come out. If people aren't willing, and I mean people making movies and documentaries, and there's a few good ones out there. If people who are making shows are not willing to put it out there for free because they know that their work is good and that people will want to watch it irregardless of that elitist idea that you make as much money as possible. I don't know. I'm just ranting, I guess. I mean, what what is there left? And you can't even rant these days because somebody will just block you. They'll just kick you off the internet. You know, I've had a lot of my YouTube videos muted by YouTube or it just says, your video won't play in some country. It's like, really? How far are you going to go with that? At what point in time are you just going to shut down YouTube? I mean, if the purpose is to figure out just how well you can control the narrative and how you can control what people can say, if that's the point, at what point in time do you just say, no, we're going to do it like they do over in China, where nobody's allowed to have a YouTube channel, where the Facebook is being monitored by the police. And if you say anything that they don't like, they'll come down there and harvest your organs. At what point in time do they just completely censor everybody? I don't know. Hurts my brain to think about it. I just know that, you know, I, I mean, I guess I got to keep trying. Maybe people will start listening to me one day. Maybe people will start trying to help me and help each other. You know, I got to keep trying to be creative. I'll keep 3D modeling, I guess. Maybe I'll even do some stop motion again. Who knows? But things are going downhill. I mean, like I said, we're, we're being invaded by mongoloids from countries where they eat dogs and they don't even have toilet paper. You know, that's going on. And I, I'd hate to make a big deal of that when the thing that usually concerns me is like proper storytelling 
in movies, which are two-dimensional. It's like in the real world, while people become obsessed, well, certain people become obsessed with comic books and movies, it's like, meanwhile, the system is falling apart because the corporate agratic overlords want to make as much money as possible before they die. And a lot of them, like if you look at Lord Rothschild and Henry Kissinger and the Manchester family and these big central bank owners, I mean, a lot of those guys are like in their 90s. And they're probably being injected with baby's blood and they're like, they're, they're radiating their blood to get the impurities out of it. And they're, they're getting probably transplants from, from kidnapped victims that have good clean organs and they're just like keeping them alive as long as possible. And they're like, it's like, Mr. Rothschild, here's some fresh baby's blood. Yeah, just inject that right here. It's like those rich overlords, those billionaires and trillionaires, they're trying to get as much money as possible before they die. And that's a really bad way to do things. And they've been doing it for a good 25, 30, maybe 50 years, you could say, in terms of the collapse of our world, the, the globalistic, corporate agratic collapse. It's been going on for a while. And quite frankly, you could blame masters of the universe and the obsessive nature of a lot of people who grew up in the 80s and they were just sitting back watching movies while the corporate system was becoming corrupt. And maybe the reason why things are falling apart now and the food and water is all poisoned and, you know, there's all these estrogen and, like, genetic mutations and, like, <laughs> and people getting autism that shouldn't. There's, like, a lot of really bad problems that are going on right now that could spell out the end of the human race. And it's, like, was anybody paying attention? Was my generation paying attention? I don't know. I mean, I have to take some blame for it because I've spent a lot of time obsessing over something that's a comic book issue. That's like, it's like a two dimensional issue. It's like, does the battle between like He Man and Skeletor and Hordak and these people on She Ra, like, is that the most important thing? Or is like the real world important? I don't know. I know I've always gotten my hope and my inspiration from Masters of the Universe and Transformers. You know, Optimus Prime would roll out, you know, it's like Autobots transform. You know, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> I should be able to do Optimus Prime. <clears throat> Autobots transform. I can't do it. Voice is wrecked. You know, and Orco. I don't know. Where's the future going to lead? I'm pretty good at predicting the future. And all my predictions are really, really negative. They're really, really sad. It's like, I don't see a good future where things are hopeful. I just see chaos and death and bad stuff, you know. Maybe stonework. Maybe that's what we need. Maybe it would be cool if you could take my storyboards and cut them into stone so that my stories about Masters of the Universe and Transformers and the Robotech Wars, you could carve it into stone, into like granite or some of that really, really hard stuff like Trinitite or whatever. Just carve it into like the strongest kind of stones <clears throat> like the great temples in like dynastic Egypt or whatever. And then like thousands of years in the future, there might not be any people around at all. Maybe some orangutans will like evolve into a human like creature like 2 million years from now. And they'll find my work carved into stone and and they'll figure out what happened to the human race. And it's like, 
oh, those silly humans, they poisoned themselves and they, they bickered and they couldn't deal with their, their race issues and their and their and their their differences. They couldn't figure out why boys and girls are different, even though it's like right in front of your face. It's like He Man and She Ra are brother and sister. Even if they don't agree with each other, they have to get along, they have to work together, they can't kill each other. It's like boys and girls have to figure it out. But, you know, by that point in time, they'll be they'll, they'll be digging up fossilized bones from the human race. And they'll be like, yeah, they had their chance. They could have, like, built space elevators. They could have, like, had Nikola Tesla's, like, anti-gravity or something. You know, like John Hutchin Hutchinson who figured out how to use... Tesla coil and frequency generators and levitate things. <laughs> they could have like figured it out, man. They could have lived forever. They could have built they could have built capsules, if you will, of I mean, to try and think of local area and centralized government, which is <laughs> where it gets weird. But if you were to build a bunch of like spaceships that were like capsules of which a certain amount of people could live within and you could figure out how to make those people live for hundreds of years or to say that they were immortal if you were to figure out how to make people live long then your obstacle would be how do you have just a certain amount of people that can live for a long time together and don't have as many issues because of their differences and you could put them in those capsules and send them out there into outer space <laughs> nah no we're gonna we're gonna go out with a fart the human race is going to be lost to the the world this rare precious earth and as we all slowly die, we're going to have Michael Bay's Transformers Volume 8 or 9 or 10 or something. And we're going to have David Goyer's Masters of the Universe, probably five or six or seven of those. Who knows? It'll be bad. Uh, Hollywood will sell their assets to China. So by the third Masters of the Universe movie, he'll probably be Chinese, you know. Who knows? It's going to be bad. And that's how the human race is going to go out. The The final hours of the human race is just going to be... It, it, it's just going to be... It's going to be crap. You know? It's going to be crap. So, there's your positive note. <laughs> We're all going to die. And it's terrible. Hehehehe. <laughs>